Okay, welcome back everybody. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, so it is our first uh, hourly session uh, this afternoon. And uh, again, to remind everybody, you can see the size of our audience in one of two ways. You can say this is a really small audience, or you can say, no, it's a really intimate audience. Yes. <laughs> right? We're getting a lot out of this because we're sharing. But we're also sharing, we record all of our events for YouTube. So on our YouTube channel, you'll be able to be able to see this in whenever we get around to editing it. You'll be able to see us, uh, uh, see, see the events. And probably yourselves as well, because anyone who attends our meetings ends up being in one of our promotional videos in some way, shape, or form. So make sure you always have your best face on. So, um, so in our next intimate conversation is going to be with Chris Holyfield. He joins us today, and uh, he's from the I Am Salt Lake podcast. So let's hear it for Chris and podcasting one on Chris. All right, podcasting. Podcasting is hot. Did everybody get, I don't think I gave you one of these. This is what I'm going to be going over in a few minutes on, um, like it says, Podcasting 101. It's the basics on how to get a, how to launch a podcast, why you need a podcast, um, tips and tricks of things I've learned along the way. I've been podcasting for almost six years now, uh, so I've kind of seen... A lot of changes in the podcasting world, especially now they have the, that new show out, Alex. I don't know if anyone's watched that on like ABC. It's about podcasting. And when I started six years ago, I had to explain to probably 90% of the people I brought on the show what a podcast was. Now it seems like everybody knows what a podcast is. I'm curious, who here, does anybody here have a podcast? You, how long have you been doing podcasting? I've been doing it for almost a year. I've been on my third year uh, episode. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We could we could chat more. Uh, you're do you're doing one yeah, too. We're just over lunch. Awesome. Brand new. Awesome. Well, I and I don't know. Is anybody here listen to to the podcast I do? I am Salt Lake uh, by chance. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I I do it with my wife Chrissy, who couldn't make it today. Uh, I started it six years ago when I started the podcast, which I actually want to get in. I, put, I gave these handouts out on how to do a podcast. I want to kind of go through it, but as I'm going through it, I'm going to share some fun stories and, and things that I learned and, and things to avoid. But I'm, I'm going to tell you guys up front, what I say isn't the, like, it's not the Bible of podcasting, because podcasting is still kind of in the Wild West. And the biggest mistake I made when I started podcasting six years ago, for the first three and four years, I felt like I had to listen to everybody else. So I kind of held myself back, not really letting myself fully get out there. And I believe I could have been a lot further than I even am now if I would have just not listened, blazed my own path, you know, said... Do things my way, you know, don't worry. Oh, you know, you're going to sound silly on the microphone. Anyway, let's go through this list here really quick. Uh, and hopefully by the end of this, everybody's going to want to launch a podcast. Uh, and, and, yeah, let's see here. So the first thing is pick a topic, right? We're all like, okay, what, what do we want our podcast to be about? I talk to a lot of clients. I do, a, a, do a quite a bit of coaching with people, and, they, and they'll say, I want to start a podcast. I want it to be about, you know, pop culture. Well, that's so broad. I mean, that's ginormous. You're going to get a lot of listeners, but you're not really going to find your audience. So when you find your, for finding a topic, you kind of really want to kind of niche it down, bring it down to, I was, I was talking to a guy, he does a chameleon breeding podcast, just about chameleon breeders. I talked to another guy who does a podcast about Pinewood Derby, uh, uh, another guy who, who they talk about, you know, office pins. And so there's all kinds of topics you want to find something that you're so into that you can't shut up talking about it, right? Like, what do you talk to uh, your friends all night and your wife or husband are like, shut up already, you know, that's, that's what you want your podcast to be about. Don't get so hung up on it. Again, I've learned a lot over the last six years that podcasting kind of evolves and changes and uh, there's a, you, you, you could change while you're while you're doing the podcast. So don't, um, don't get too hung up on this, even though it is an important part of the process. Number two is you want to decide if you want to do it with a co-host or you want to do it solo. 
And a lot of times people get hung up, they think they need a co-host, right? They're like, oh, I can't do it alone, it's too hard, blah, blah, blah. I started doing I Am Salt Lake by myself, where it was just myself, the other person interviewing them. It was a lot of fun, uh, but I felt like something was missing. So about 150 episodes in, I brought a co-host in, I brought a buddy, which we didn't mix well, and then all of a sudden, how do you, how do you get rid of them? And without losing your friendship, and uh, <laughs> it didn't work out very well. It was hard. We're still friends, but what I would recommend almost for anybody is start a sh show solo and then kind of try people out, right? Like you're just like, oh yeah, just come on the show and chat. I'll come back again, come back again, and then maybe, oh yeah, why don't you be a coach? That's my opinion. Uh, the nice thing about doing a show solo, though, what I enjoyed is I got to make all the decisions. I got to decide who I was going to talk to. And then bringing somebody else on is kind of like, well, do you want to talk to this person? And then you have to figure out, like, if you make money, you know, who, who splits the money, who keeps the money? Well, what if one of you quits the podcast? Who, who owns the name? And, and so you, have, you want to figure a lot of that stuff out, and it can get tricky. These are things to kind of keep in mind uh, while you're launching a podcast. Now, if you just say some buddies that want to, you know, talk in the basement on Dungeons & Dragons or card games or whatever, maybe you're just messing around and it's not it's not a big deal it's it's not the end of the world if if one of you guys take off um, the next part of the process and again these aren't in exact order these are just 16 steps that I believe are are kind of important for getting your podcast going a lot of people were like I don't even know where to start so these are the 16 ones uh, pick your show style you can do a solo show or you can do an interview show Really, it goes back to what I was saying. It's the Wild West of podcasting. There's no rules. If, if you have an idea, run with it because that could be your success, right? Like a lot of people see successful people and then they mimic them. They're like, oh, well, he's making millions because he's doing a daily podcast. And, you know, Wait, he's, someone's making millions doing a podcast? <laughs> Actually, believe it or not, there are. There are, there are a lot of people that are making uh, substantial incomes with podcasting. Um, I mean, John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire. Uh, Tim Ferriss. Tim, Tim Ferriss, uh, Pat Flynn. I mean, there's, anyway. Um, so th this, is, this is an important step is, you know, are you gonna do your interviews on Skype? I know I was talking to somebody, you know, Jerry here, about Skype interviews and person interviews. Just kind of decide what you're gonna do with your show style. Number four, this could be a tricky one for a lot of people because, like me, I have kids at home and so I can't podcast at home. Some people are like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll podcast in my basement. You, you gotta decide, you know, again, what, what type of show you're gonna do and where you need to do it. We're actually in the process of um, setting up a, a podcast studio here at Access that we're, we're gonna be renting out for like the hour that people can use. Uh, it, you know, that way you don't have to run out and get all the equipment right away. And uh, you can go that route. I've, I've heard of people, uh, they podcast in their cars, right? They're, they're, because it's good acoustics, there's no noise, they go out to their car in their driveway, they have their portable recorder, and they just talk into there. Another option, uh, this is this is an option that I wish I would have done in the beginning is is approach like a a, a business like a coffee shop even and said hey I'll, I'll make you the sponsor if you let me come and record here you got to keep in mind you don't know how noisy it's going to be when you need to come and record there though right like these are things to, to keep in mind of uh, why you're why you're getting your podcast launch eventually I had to to rent an office just because I needed it to be quiet, I needed some more professional. Uh, I didn't know how it would always be bringing people to my house, you know, or the kid's gonna have it messy, right? And then, and then recently I was lucky enough to move everything over here to Access uh, to start, start setting up the, uh, the uh, studio here. So, let's see, the next, pick a name for your podcast. This is kind of a fun one and a tricky one because there's so many podcasts already out there, right? There's so many names and, and you want to get a catchy name and then people are like, oh, I want to spell it weird and put a number in there or have a silent J or, or uh, just 
try to be creative, but the problem is, is people don't remember names like that. They remember uh, simple names. And I think that's why, like I was lucky with I Am Salt Lake, because people, it, it's, a, it's an easy to remember name, it's easy to spell, people are going to remember it, they know what the show is about. And so these are all kind of important factors with picking a name. Because you want people to see the name and know, okay, well, that's what the show's about, right? Like, if you're going to do a podcast about alligators and you call it the, the dog show, it's like, well, that's not what, what it's about. I know a lot of people will do a show about, like, they'll name it, like, say, the Chris Hollifield show. Well, who, who's Chris Hollifield, right? Like, you could get away with that if you're a famous person. But I really wouldn't recommend doing that right from the start. But, and, and then also, like it says right here, on the, on the handout I gave, make sure that the website's available. Make sure like your Facebook and your Twitter and um, all of those are going to be available with the name so you can get the same handle across the entire uh, spectrum. Because there's, in my opinion, you, you're, it's not always possible, but in my opinion, if you, if you have like your pot, you know, add a number onto one and this and that, it gets confusing for listeners. So if you can kind of have the same name all the way across the, the entire spectrum uh, would be the best way, in my opinion. Moving on to step six, this, well, let's see here. Get, find your hardware for your podcast. This is uh, another one that can be a holdup for a lot of people. Everybody feels like they need to spend $1,000 or $1,500 on doing a podcast. When I started podcasting six years ago, I didn't even know if I, I was like, well, you know, I, this seems cool, right? Like, it seems like it could be fun, but I didn't want to go drop a thousand dollars and then not do it past three or four episodes. So I recorded my first three episodes with an iPhone, now an iPhone 4, mind you. Um, so, you know, obviously they're, they're many, many generations later, so I, gosh, I couldn't even imagine having an iPhone 4 now, but that was what I did my interviews on. They're garbage. They're still up and available. I want to take them down because they're embarrassing. But I made. I, I didn't want that to be an obstacle. I just wanted to learn the process. And so I put it out there. You know, I only got maybe eight or nine listens on them, right? They're there. Then I bought a microphone. I kind of started piecing it together, learning along the way. Now there's so many awesome options for podcasts. It, since it's such a, a hot... Um, a hot thing right now. They're coming out with all kinds of fun portable tools. Uh, my, my complete setup that I record with, it, it runs off of batteries and is portable and you can take it everywhere with you, which is awesome. But yet you've got studio sound uh, coming from your, from your podcast. So hardware, a lot of it just depends on what you're, what you're going to be doing for your podcast. Let's see here. Software. This is this is where you're going to be kind of editing your podcast, piecing it together. You know, a little bit of music, maybe your interview, or maybe you're just you solo talking. I like Audacity. I think I put it here on the handout. It's what I've been using for six years. It's what I'm familiar with. It's free. Uh, I know a lot of people use a lot of the fancy editing, like Pro Tools or Adobe Audition. And I'm sure they're great, but Audacity works. It's, I mean, you're not putting together a, a, a top 40 music album. You're just putting together some, some talking. And so if you can make Audacity work, I, I say, why not, right? I don't know. Has anybody used Audacity in here? I don't know. I used it. Is that what you use for your podcast? Or? Right now I'm using uh, Hindenburg. Oh, you know, I have Hindenburg. I just need to get in there and I learn know. it. But yeah, it was so easier because it couldn't all, you know, just, you know, draw the and everything. Oh, really? And then I just publish it directly to the thing, so it cut me like three or four steps. And, you know, That's like, awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of options out there. And sometimes there's a learning curve with a lot of this stuff, but just go on to YouTube. I mean, there's YouTube videos on how to do all this, or I'm willing to meet with people and kind of teach them some of what I know uh, with, with editing, or you... Nowadays, you can hire editors. You can, I, I actually edit a lot of podcasts for people, and uh, you can. There, there's a lot of a lot of options out there where uh, you don't even have to do a lot of this work anymore uh, for your podcast. 
you're gonna to wanna to buy a website. Now people say, well, I, do I need a website, right? I got a Facebook page, I got an Instagram or Twitter, right? Well, my mom listens to podcasts. She's like 75 years old and she doesn't have Facebook. She doesn't have any of the social media. She wants to go to a website, right? Like you say, hey, come back to my website, such and such .com. You need a place to direct your listeners to. So like for me, I say, hey, come to imsaltlake.com. There I have all the episodes. I have the links to subscribe. I have all the contact information. You're in control of that. What if Facebook, Twitter, all that closed down, right? You know, you want to have a place to direct people. This is, there is an option here where I tell people, if you want to skip this, you can skip it. Like if you want to save some money in the beginning, but try not to hold off too long because you don't want someone else to buy that domain name if it is available. Um, but nowadays you can get websites so cheap and, and it's not really all that, that expensive to, to register the domain. And, and if you're lucky enough to get a domain, right? Like, especially a .com nowadays, every, every .com seems to have been taken. Um, but yeah, so buy a website. You want, again, you want it to, you know, easy to remember, not funny spelling and, and all that. And believe it or not, I know, I know I say that stuff and I'm like, gosh, you know, it's funny that I have to say that, but you would be surprised how many people Think they're created by spelling stuff weird. <laughs> Graphics, that's, that's our current graphic that we use for I Am Salt Lake. Um, graphics can be tricky because they're expensive. They're not, they're not cheap. When I started, I wasn't married to an amazing graphic artist, so I had to go to Fiverr.com. I got a, a logo, it's, it's a bit embarrassing. Uh, but, it, but it worked for the time being. I needed an iTunes logo, and it worked. Um, I don't know if anybody's used Fiverr, but it's, it's a really easy thing. You just go on there, find an artist, and, and they can do the design work for you. And, you're, and you can change. I mean, I Am Salt Lake has many different um, changes to it. And you just kind of find what works for you, and then you learn, oh, I better change it because I want to put this on T-shirts or I want to change it because, uh, like I've had different ones that had too many different colors and layers. And I mean, you don't think about these things in the beginning. And so I uh, just kind of put that in mind too. And plus a nice logo, right? Let's say somebody's on iTunes or, or searching for a podcast. If you have a, like a logo that pops out, they might check out your podcast too. Because right, like as a podcast creator, as a podcast host, we want to find listeners and we want to bring people to the show and if we could do that through our graphics. 99designs, I don't know, I've heard is, is a popular place too. Also, I know a lot of people even throw it out on, on whatever social media they use. Hey, do I got any friends that do it? And maybe you can take them out to dinner or something like that. Just my only recommendation, don't expect people to do everything for free either. You know what I mean? They gotta, they gotta, their time is money too. Did you have a question there or no? Oh, just uh, another suggestion. Simbi.com, S-I-M-B-I is a platform where you can trade services. Oh, excellent. Cindy, I've never heard of this one. And it's, it's really, there's a lot of people that do lots of different things, and you can create your own services that you can trade, and you use the like in-website cash, basically, to make sure that you're not overtaking without also giving yeah. people, if that makes sense. That's great. But yeah. you can find lots of creators of lots of different things on Simbi.com. Awesome. So I don't know if you all heard that. Simbi.com for, for graphics. Next, number 10, some intro music. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I find a lot of podcasts that don't have intro music. They just jump right into the content, which you can do. But I always feel like I'm missing something, right? Like, like to me, that intro music, 20, 30, 40 seconds, where you, you become familiar with that show, especially a show that you listen to week after week, right? You're familiar. You know the show started. You, you downloaded that episode. You're ready for your host to talk, whatever the subject's about. And, and you become familiar with that intro music, uh, I, I think it, it really helps set the tone for your show. The problem with, the hard part with intro music is you have to deal with copyright music, right? Like, you don't want to, you don't want to steal uh, uh, somebody's music, you don't want to uh, get, get in trouble with, with whatever copyright police or whatnot, because I know iTunes, I've, I've actually talked to people that they've had their podcast taken down from iTunes because they use copyright music. Did you have yeah, you might have an exit strategy of ultimately selling your podcast to someone else, 
and the film production people in here will tell you, dot your I's, cross your T's, because if there's something legal you didn't cover in the beginning, you have nothing to sell. No one's going to buy it. Yeah. So cover it. Well, and, Sp and I know Spotify, Spotify's opened up a lot to podcasting right now, which I'm going to get into, I believe, on the next one. But I know Spotify won't, you can't put your podcast in there if you have any copyright either. Uh, I don't know, how, again, how they check it. But these are things to keep in mind. So royalty-free is good. There's also people that you can hire to do that. Uh, I would recommend, me personally, I like to listen to a podcast that has a different person's voice welcoming people to the show personally. I don't think it really, I, I don't know, you know, a man's voice, a woman's voice. I don't think it really 100% matters. I know that there's people that believe it does. Um, just things to consider. Again, I went to Fiverr.com, though, when I first started I Am Salt Lake to get my intro on there. I think I paid like 15 bucks for one, and it worked, you know, and, and, it, and it took care of me for the time being, and it and helped me get to that next step of the podcast. And let me say this now, actually, why, why we're saying that. You will never... I just posted episode 327 this last Sunday, right? The podcast. I put one out every week. I'm still not 100% stoked, right? You could still sit and feel like, well, I could spend another eight hours making it perfect, right? But eventually you get to a point where you just got to put it out there. You can't. You're your own worst critic. You hate your voice. You hate your... Where do you find your own on, on the, you just Google search it. Uh, yeah, I would just search royalty-free podcast music, copyright-free podcast. You might have to pay a, a few bucks for it. I, I know that there's some membership sites. Another good option, though, is if uh, hit up a local band. I'm actually, still to this day, I'll always tell people that, and I kick myself every day for not, like, with doing a Salt Lake podcast, why am I not using a Salt Lake City band for the music? I don't know. Right? Haven't done it yet. Haven't done it. Media hosting, right? What is media hosting? Why, why, why do I need media hosting? I talk to a lot of people that they just put their podcast right up on their website, right? They're, they're, and you could do it, but you could also, your web provider, your web host, HostGator or Blue Dream or whatever, I don't know, all the different hosts out there, they could, they'll shut you down if, they, if you get too much traffic to it because part of the agreement was something in there with that and so that's why people go to like Lipson. I think you mentioned Lipson already that's who I recommend I've been there for for six years I actually got a code in here you can you can get a free month with them try them out see what they use I mean that's what the big dogs used when I first started podcasting I'm like all right who does Joe Rogan use who does Mark Maron use who does Dan Carlin hardcore history these are the podcasts that are getting like millions of downloads right Lipson provides stats you can find out uh, where your listeners are from you can find out what 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 you know, the laptop or, or iPhone or Stitcher app or iTunes app. And so those those stats really help, especially when you're approaching sponsors, right? They want to know, like, well, who, what, what area is my demographic in? And uh, believe it or not, California is neck and neck with my show of, of, of a Salt Lake City show. I have almost just as many California listeners as Salt Lake City listeners. Go figure uh, but Libsyn is good. I mean, it's like 20 bucks a month or 15, 20 bucks a month, depending, is probably about what you're going to do. They have some good uh, options for an app. So you can, you can have an app for your podcast, which I'm in the process of setting up for my podcast. Just publish and publishes. Yeah, so they publish. So, yeah, you set it up uh, to go to, like, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, all the different podcast outlets. They just push your RSS feed. So once you set it up with Libsyn or, or Blueberry or wherever you Spreaker, they'll they push it out to, to the podcast outlets. But for how, for how cheap uh, podcast hosting is, I would recommend using a service like Libsyn or whatever. And, and, and I tell people, they're like, well, I need to save money. It's like, well, you know, hobbies cost money, right? I got buddies that fish, and they spend hundreds of dollars every month fishing. So twenty bucks a month or something to host your podcast really, hopefully, isn't isn't uh, the end of the world. Could be, and I'm not. A, you know, it's. I understand if it is. All right, now you want to record your podcast. You got your buddy ready. You guys got had a few drinks, and you're sitting in the basement. And you're ready to record. You're going to probably, I would recommend here. You're not going to like your first few episodes that you record. I'm not, 
we record it, but you never, again, it goes back to what I said. I mean, I've been doing it for six years and I'm still not 100% happy. But if, you know, you have the time, the patience, you might want to re-record a few times. Um, let's see here. I would recommend a portable recorder to record into personally. I know a lot of people record directly into their laptops or desktops. It's a lot cheaper to replace a portable recorder. You can get a portable recorder for two, three, four hundred dollars versus a laptop. I killed, I had a really nice MacBook and I thought, oh, I'll record right into there. And a lot of my beginning episodes were right at people's businesses. So I was lugging this thing around and, and all the wear and tear, all of a sudden I'm having to go out and buy a brand new computer, right? And MacBooks aren't cheap as you guys probably realize. So what I do is I record into the portable recorder and then I edit it later on in, in, my, in my laptop. That's the way I do it. And I find it, it works It works great. Uh, again, it just depends on what kind of podcast you decide you want to do uh, with, the pro with the process of, of your podcast. Number 13, assemble your podcast. This kind of repeats it back into Audacity. Um, you get your intro music, your audio, piece it together, make sure all your volumes are, are good and whatnot. And then you're going to want to write some show notes. And I'm still not the best with show notes, even though this is probably one of the most important steps of a podcast, in my opinion, because show notes is how people are going to find you, right? You're going to put your show notes on your website. That becomes Google juice. People are going to find you. They're going to search me. You know, I want to find out about the mayor of Salt Lake. Well, all of a sudden they find your podcast because maybe you interviewed the mayor of Salt Lake, right? Unfortunately, search engines can't get into your podcast and hear all the stuff you've said, so that's why you, you make, uh, make um, you know, whatever you talked about on your podcast, paragraph or two, the, the, the more in-depth you can do, the more keywords you can put in your show notes, that's where, you know, you're going to get people outside of your current listeners, new listeners to your show. Plus, it also tells people, like I get a lot of people, I'll, I'll chat on a podcast and talk about somebody's new business, and I'll say, hey, come back to the website. Um, I put all the links up there, which you want to make sure to put all the links that you talked about on your Yep, so it brings people to your website, which hopefully on your website you're collecting email addresses because that's another way to stay connected to your audience. Maybe they, they find out you're on Facebook or I even use Snapchat to stay connected to my audience. And so, again, it just brings people back to your website. So what's your take on transcripts? You know, like some people, I used to do transcripts at the beginning and gave up because it's a cost. Yeah. And it doesn't help, I think, you know, like the people just... You found it didn't help? It didn't help? I haven't done a lot of transcripts basically because of cost. And then you still have to spend a few hours cleaning it up depending on how long your show is. Personally, I think if you can do it, do it because... Did you have it plugged into the website? or Like how did people find the transcripts? Were they not... Because it was part of the preparation. Yeah. But was it on your website, the transcript? Yeah, I would put it on the show notes. I, yeah, I would, ima I would imagine the S that it would, but if you didn't find it was valuable, and again, this goes back to what I was saying. I mean, I don't know, I, I don't set the rules with podcasting, right? Like, maybe it didn't work for you, but maybe it would work for mine or his or hers. And then not hers. It's just like, like I know a lot of people uh, you might use one social media, and, but they're like, well, my audience doesn't use Twitter, so don't don't spend time on Twitter. Me, I, that's how I find a lot of my listeners is through Twitter, right? Like, I, I, I've been lucky through Twitter. It just it works for me. So you, again, you have to find what works for you. Maybe transcripts don't work for you. That's yeah. I don't know. That's that's interesting. Yeah, right now, I just. To, uh, very Remind work. me, what's your show about? Um, I help uh, young leaders to do better, a better job as managers. Help them for managers? Uh, managers like IT people yeah. become managers so they can manage people in a better way. It's called Strategic Want. Yeah, and you, you've done it for a year, right? Almost a year. How long did you do transcripts for? Uh, I did for the first few four episodes. Uh, episodes, then I thought, you know, it's taking too long. Yeah. So I have. Maybe you just didn't give it a chance. I don't know. Yeah. So, there's a. I know that there's a website called Trent that does it. That I think it does it for. 
I, I want to say my my wife said it was like it ended up being like ten bucks for an hour or something like so you know that's not I know Amazon actually has a, a brand new transcription service that ends up being ridiculous like sixty cents for an hour I haven't tried it I haven't tried the service so I don't know how well it is or how how well it, it translates it I think it's hard when you have a lot of voices I think for the transcriptions but. I actually had a lot of people in my beginning days reach out to me and they say, oh, oh, do you have the transcripts? And I'd be like, why do, you, why do you want to read this, right? Like, that's why I do it in a podcast. Or... And your topic is actually a topic of make a great book. And I tell my clients, podcasts are one of the easiest ways to write books. So at some point, transcriptions will probably be valuable to you. Let me go. I'm going to go over. I got two more things I want to throw up here, and then uh, uh, I want to. I want to kind of open up to questions here. See if anybody else has any questions uh, before I run out of time. I just got the sign that I've got 15 minutes here. So, upload to Libsyn or whatever media host. We talked about that. Kind of once you set it up to like iTunes and Stitcher and Spotify and all that, it'll route it into all those places. And then the last one, share on social media. A lot of people forget this one, right? A lot of people, they make the podcast and they just let it sit there. And then, you know, you get a couple of listeners. And you're like, okay, you know, I got 20 downloads. I got 80 downloads. But if you don't share it, how are people going to discover it, right? Well, I'm embarrassed. I don't want my family to listen to it. I don't want my friends. Well, then, then set, up a, set up a social media that's just your podcast. But honestly... I've been sharing my podcast episodes for six years, and I'll get people message me that have been like my Facebook friend for that entire time, and they're like, I finally listened to your show because you just posted this awesome interview with the owner of Ruby Snap Cookies, and I love her cookies, and so now and now I'm going back and listening, and it's like, wow, it's taken you six years to, to listen to an episode, but by sharing it consistently. And also, if you have evergreen content, right? Say you do a podcast episode, that that a year ago that still relates currently, you know, throw it out there, throw it out there back in your Twitter or or, or uh, Facebook, and um, it's a great way to stay connected to your audience and whatnot. So anyway, any questions before before I run out of time or anybody? Yeah. So what do you recommend? Are there any tips that you personally have for like projecting? I guess when you're recording the actual podcast, just any tips for being a good conversationalist and interviewing people, you know? Yeah, that's, a, that, that's one that takes uh, time to learn, really. I would listen listen to a lot of podcasts with interviews. Listen to how people do interviews. Uh, you know, I took a, I actually took a class. A, 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 I remember it was I was finishing up some, some stuff at night school at Salt Lake Community College. Uh, at the beginning of doing this podcast... And they happen to take an interview in class, and I learned a lot from it. So, I mean, if you have any, op, you know, ways to do something like that, even that really helps out a lot. A lot of it just depends on what kind of interview you want to do. I know a lot of people like really structured, formatted interviews. Some people like really loose, free-forming interviews, wherever it goes. A lot of that's just kind of personal style of an interview. It, you'll get better with it, yeah. All right, so uh, I never oh. did a podcast. I was always interested, but when I, uh, I basically moved to a uh-huh. And I started writing a little excerpt every day. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, now I tried to get it on one of those like, WordPress or yeah, couldn't figure it out. It's like I felt it was really kind of the audio or the, the I didn't do audio. It was just writing. Yeah. So I guess the question is, um, how do you feel about narrative podcasts? And they, I mean, they work. I mean, look at audiobooks. I listen to a lot yeah. of audiobooks on Audible, and uh, they work. The only thing is, is, is narrative is tough in my opinion because you want to keep your listener there right as a host I mean it could work I, I guess I've never really listened to it a lot but I just don't know how much personality would be there yeah I guess it depends on the but yeah it depends on how you read it uh, I mean I, I guess if it's just you talking and right. if you kind of made it sound like you weren't just you know, yeah, you know story. Bob and Frank, you know, kind of really get into it, right? Uh, there, there's a podcast, uh, Bill Burr does. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Bill Burr. He's just a comedian. He does a solo show, talks sports and family. It's just him rambling on a microphone. Yeah. It's, it's great. Uh, I, I think you could pull it off if, if you're, if, you know, you're good. But it's hard. It's, yeah. it's hard to just sit there on a microphone uh, and talk and nobody's there, right? 
I'd say put a picture up of somebody and pretend <laughs> you're talking to that person. But uh, any more there? I, we're almost out of time here. Do you have a question? Or? Yeah. <clears throat> Great stuff, Chris. Thank you. Um, so what's a podcast you admire that you think is getting yeah, nailed in? That's a good question because there's so many podcasts out there. There's so many. I think a really great podcast that shows that anything is possible is um, there's a podcast called The Hardcore History, which I don't know if anybody listens to. That's great. It's a great podcast, and, and, and he breaks a lot of barriers and a lot of things with it because of the, you know there's all this stuff. All oh, a podcast needs to be 23 minutes, and this. I mean, some of his episodes are like three, four, five hours. And then he, he doesn't have a release schedule, but he, he gets in, you can tell he's passionate about it. Uh, uh, he's, he creates good content, waits till it's, it's all put together. Uh, it, uh, interviewer, I mean, I, I really love Joe Rogan. I don't know if anybody listens to Joe Rogan's podcast. I think he's, he's just kind of has great conversations. You feel like you're right there in the room with him. I personally think if it, if it becomes too commercial, it's like, oh, I could just listen to the radio. You want to feel like you're part of the conversation. You want to, you, you become, you create these relationships with your host, right? And um, it's, it's, oh yeah, there's so many different ones out there. Entrepreneur on Fire, John Lee Dumas, I think does a great show. Did you say Hardcore History? Hardcore History, yeah. yeah Dan Carlin's Hardcore History uh, is a great show. Rachel, one of the top downloaded podcasts. Yeah, a couple more questions probably, and then he's going to kick me out of here. <laughs> Let's see, Jerry right here. Yeah, um, and it may be a stupid question. No, no, I, I, I threw a lot out at one time, right? You know. But if you're using the interview process, do you, is it necessary for you to get a release from the person you're interviewing? I've never gotten one, and I mean, I'm not so, again, I'm, I, you know, that the subject's get, gotten brought up. I think, I think your audio recording's like good. I, in my opinion, right? Like, maybe you can maybe even ask them before if you want. I, I wouldn't think it is. I mean, I'm not a lawyer. Maybe somebody in here might even know better. I've, you could just ask, is it okay if I record you? Or yeah, you I mean, it might not hurt. Long it, audio. It, it, just, yeah. it depends, and it's interesting. I was actually talking, uh, I forgot your name, I apologize. Fritz. Fritz, about doing a book of uh, some of my interviews. And, uh, you know, you got to be careful because then all of a sudden you pushed some interviews up and somebody's like, wait a minute. Am I going to make any money off of this book? So, it. Uh, any other questions? One more question. Yeah, right over here. I don't really have a question, but when I first moved to Utah, I had my own radio show. Excellent. And um, Rachel was asking about projections. The first thing we learned was that the microphone is your friend. Yeah. You got to kiss it. Yeah. And um, and then and articulate. You know, so you can understand. But the I don't think as far as uh, recording, if the person knows you're recording. I don't think there's a problem with talking about it. Yeah. Because obviously, unless you were secretly doing it, but it's podcast, they know what's happening. Yeah. And that's that's how I've always felt, and that's that's what I've done. So anyway, thank you so much. My email address is on the board. Please shoot me an email. I, I love to chat podcasting. I actually started a Facebook group last summer called Podcast Salt Lake City that we have like 300 and some members in and we do like meetups once a month and uh, we chat podcasting in there and a lot of people in there haven't even launched one yet but there's a lot of people that have launched one. Um, Chris, one more final question. Yeah. Can you make money doing it? Yeah, you, you actually can make money doing it. I, I wouldn't recommend you to quit your day job tomorrow <laughs> by any means uh, but you can actually make Substantial. I believe the best way to make a money from a podcast is if you have a product to sell. If you have a product to direct people to, you can get sponsors, but you're not, you're not going to make a million dollars from a sponsor. But if you say you wrote a book, or say you you're a band, maybe. exactly a band. That's why it's so popular with comedians because so maybe you, they can route people. Maybe you should have one. Exactly. Exactly. Or what I'm doing now with the, the podcast studio we're set up here. I'm kind of, you know, hey, you guys want to do a podcast? Come on. In. Yeah, exactly. Or another way to make money is, and I've actually done it, I've done some live shows at some of the local bars here in Salt Lake. You charge five, ten bucks a head to get in and split the door and you've got a few bucks. Or merch. You can sell t-shirts or mugs or something like that. But but from a podcast directly, unless you're doing a podcast like Hardcore History, getting a million downloads, the average podcast gets like 150 downloads an episode.
episode. So, anyway, yeah.